generational of our technology, the gaps within the modern South Korean society. The notions of putting interest of a group and well-being of the elderly ahead of individualism are thought to be among the central aspects of Korean form of neoconfucianism. Combination of folk culture and change to orthodoxy has not only contributed to the emphasis of authority and respect in daily life, but also to prevalence of manichaeistic outlook from Goryeo Joseon times into modernity. This dichotomy, deeply connected to such concepts as yin yang or five traditional relationships, is typically embodied in the ethno linguistic opposition between old and young, privileged and underprivileged, male and female, or higher and lower. However, with the rise of popularity of Western lifestyle and global culture in South Korea, new and significant changes can be noticed within this society. These new processes create new dynamics within conservative neo-Confucian kinship politics and public structures modeled after these familial patterns. The goal of this text is not to analyze the complexity of these developments in its entirety, but rather to examine new aspects of social authority in the rapidly growing Republic of Korea with emphasis set on the alienating eff effects these changes have on the opposing yet formerly interdependent groups. One of the basic contemporary tendencies in South Korea is the gradual dissolution of extended family structures in favor of nuclear families, which is a result of re rapid urbanization coupled with popularization of Western model of life. The consequences of this, of this change are far-reaching. However, the most prominent effect is the departure from the Confucian idea of the support of the elderly by younger generations. Despite the fact that Confucian values such as filial piety or stress on self-cultivation have influenced the development of the state, it may be argued that the ritualistic aspect of the doctrine has largely disappeared from life of South Koreans or became a wagon of the modern pop cultural communication. In this setting, the elderly cannot expect to receive sufficient financial support from the young, nor can they serve the role of focal points in family any longer. Due to the largely underdeveloped system of corporal re retirement, the pensions are low and as such the elderly must depend on their long-time savings. While there are certainly rising job opportunities for them, it is because of their typically low academic qualifications that they cannot su sufficiently compete with young graduates of modern Korean universities. The rural communities are particularly estranged in this respect as the downfall of the system of extended families has caused the rapid flow of intellectual and working human resources to the quickly developing cities, the elderly were deeply affected and isolated by these changes. However, in order to understand the roots of these changes, a brief outline of the recent history of Korean Peninsula must be presented. The Korean War of 1950 to 1953 was, in a purely sociological context, essentially a continuation of the processes of nation-building initiated at the end of the 19th century and during the Japanese occupation. Plans and visions of Kim Il-sung and Ri sing man were officially encapsulated within doctrine trends of communism and capitalist nationalism may in fact be interpreted as embodiments of two fundamental impulses of Korean society. The sense of belonging within a communitarian structure stemming from the mixture of pure Korean traditions and Confucian thought, and the ideology of individualism related to anti-feudalism and Christian idea of salvation, which were introduced and absorbed in Korea firstly in the 19th century. The partition of Korea into two radically different states, despite being to a certain degree influenced by foreign powers, in fact divided the peninsula roughly according to ideological preferences not only of the leaders, but also of the society. The consequences of this division were much more long-term, however. In the case of South Korea, which will remain the main point of focus in this presentation, the complete breakdown of many kinship structures and separation of families were factors initiating the displacement of the elderly, while the education system of that time centered on installation of patriotic values and creation of student-worker cadre possessing abilities useful for the state, was gradually becoming less accessible and affordable for those living in the countryside. Furthermore, as he on Cho says, in such an anti-communist regimented society, we can see a great imbalance between both the state and civil society and between capital and labor, facilitating both status mobilization and authoritarian integration. 
Indeed, the authoritarianism and anti-communism as the key values promoted by the governments of recent man, Pak chung hee and their successors, while promoting the economic development of the country, in effect have closed the society within the specific form of national organization, and it was only in the beginning of the 1990s that Koreans, motivated in, by the processes of democratization and the fall of authoritarianism, have set their sights on different cultural impulses, for the first time allowing globalization and all elements associated with it to influence their lives for the first time. Political change, coupled with processes of globalization, were not only the dominant causes for the popularization of Korean culture worldwide, in the form of so-called Han Wave, but have also triggered new developments within South Korea's internal social-cultural reality. The shift from heavy industry and agri agriculture into high-tech devices and machine components brought economic di diversity, allowing new media to flourish. Awareness of the Western models of social communication became high.